Welcome to the Hunter's Monkey Syndrome. I know a lot of you have been waiting for the follow-up episode to How to Do Crypto Part 1. I've had a lot of positive response from that video and we're going to continue with that today and look at the different ways to get your RANDs into a crypto format, including buying it from an exchange. Please take note of our new social media pages or handles where you can follow the show. And I thank all of you who keep supporting me very much. It's really appreciated. If you found this video valuable and haven't done so yet, please consider making a donation to one of the more traditional channels in the description below or if you are already a crypto user to one of the crypto wallets on screen. Before we move on, there are just a few crypto basics that I feel I would like to cover first. I asked viewers in part one to go research a few cryptos that have been around for a while. Now I understand for those of you who did this that you won't understand everything that you read and that's okay. I just wanted you to see the kind of words and concepts you'll be dealing with a lot. But let's just go over some of the important basics before we get started. A crypto wallet address is also sometimes referred to as your public key. Public keys or wallet addresses are like bank account numbers. This is a key that other people can have without any risk to you. You can print this on a billboard if you want the whole world to know your wallet address. No one can do anything with this address or QR code except send you money. One of the worst first world problems you could possibly have. All other types of keys, private keys, owner keys, etc. are for your eyes only to be kept safe from other entities or people. These are literally the keys to your account or wallet. So remember for now, the only key that is safe for you to give out is your public key or public wallet address. Typically a wallet address looks like this or in the form of a QR code. They have certain formats and some different currencies will share certain formats. But what is most important to understand about wallet addresses here is that you must send apples to apples, so to speak, when doing any crypto transaction. Bitcoin to a Bitcoin address, not to a Bitcoin cash address or another variation of Bitcoin. There are several Bitcoin variations or forks, as they are sometimes called, and they are not the same thing. Bitcoin to Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash to Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Private to Bitcoin Private, Litecoin to Litecoin, Dash to Dash, Monero to Monero, etc, etc. You cannot reverse mistakes with this. It is irreversible and you will lose that money. It's gone forever. So make sure you get this right. There are many variations or forks of not only Bitcoin, but many other currencies like Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. They are different things and cannot be used interchangeably. In other words, make sure you are sending to the right type of address as well as to the correct address. A quick word on Ethereum and ERC20 tokens. Ethereum and the Ethereum blockchain is a tool that can be used for other applications instead of just simple currency. It is in essence programmable money. It offers things like smart contracts that some of you may have heard of before, but it can in essence be made to take on or represent anything you want it to. It can be used for good ideas like tokenizing commodities or artwork so that we can, for instance, trade with each other anywhere on the planet using real gold and silver backed money. Or it can be used for bad ideas like creating a new world order friendly carbon currency like Poseidon that governments are going to employ to link your COVID vaccine passport that's going to become your ID and then become your wallet and welfare pass and pass needed to access services, your mark of dependence. So please be aware of that aspect of Ethereum. It can be used for basically anything. It can be used for good ideas and it can be used for terrible ideas. And please make sure that you don't go around supporting projects that are terrible ideas purely because you are promised profits. ERC20 tokens and other cryptos running on the Ethereum blockchain is currently being used for a wide variety of applications, many of them in the form of stable coins tokenized dollars or other national currencies. This means that for every true USD token or TUSD, for instance, there is one US dollar on deposit in a bank somewhere. It is up to you to then decide if you, the user, trust the company behind it. 
This is partly why I told people in part one to research some cryptocurrencies. You should be able to find the relevant information about companies or people behind a token, the auditors used, etc. quite easily if you look for it. If you can't verify those things, well, other popular uses for Ethereum or ERC20 tokens are tokenized commodities like gold and silver and tokenized artwork or NFTs, non-fungible tokens, to name just a few of the more popular ones at the moment. But let's move on to how to get your RANDs into crypto. There are essentially three ways to do this. Number one, start accepting cryptocurrency as payment for your goods and services. All the wallets shown in part one of how to do crypto can have the native currency set to RAND, so it is easy to price goods and services in RAND, even though the underlying transaction happens in crypto. Whichever form you receive it in, it can be easily swapped for something else in your mobile wallet you downloaded from part one. Check the fees before you do any swaps or exchanges in app and check the available options. You can also send this cryptocurrency you accepted to any crypto exchange where you have an account and sell it and trade it for whatever you want. Number two, if you know somebody who already has cryptocurrency and you want say just a hundred rand for instance in Litecoin, simply ask them if you can give them a hundred rand in exchange for a hundred rand in Litecoin. Simple, painless, anonymous. Number three, and the one I think most people are probably waiting for, buying cryptocurrency on an exchange. This is probably a good time to mention that if you are going to be selling cryptocurrency on an exchange in future so that you can take the rands and cash it back into your bank account, you will need to supply FICA documents. This is also why the claims flying around now that governments have to regulate crypto more because it will be used for crime or terrorism is so ridiculous. If you were going to use rands cashed out from your crypto exchange to fund your terrorism or cocaine lifestyle, the parasites already know where to look. And it is already law that you register your FICA documents. But what if we decide that we don't want to cash out anymore? What if we decide that we are comfortable taking this type of money for our goods and services? Our money, money that can't be randomly corrupted by vultures and parasites to use this to get real jobs in the real world. If you followed the steps from part one, the process of buying crypto on an exchange is pretty straightforward. After adding Altcoin Trader as a beneficiary to your internet banking profile with your unique reference code, send the amount you want to buy crypto for. I'll use 100 Rand in this example. This works the same as making any other online payment. Once the money arrives on the crypto exchange, it will be sitting there as a Rand balance. Nothing happens to it until you do something with it. A small fee is charged for deposits. One thing people need to keep in mind if they are alarmed every time they hear fees is to just remember that there are no monthly account fees like we have in traditional finance, where banks charge you for doing nothing. There are only fees involved here if you actually transact and do something with your money. Next, go to the markets tab and decide what crypto you want to buy. You will be taken to the market for that trading pair. You will see an area to buy and an area to sell the crypto you chose. Just below that, you will see current sell offers from cheapest to more expensive. And next to it, you will see the current buy offers. Now you can put in a buy offer for any price you want, but if you want the offer triggered immediately or faster at least, it is wise to try beat the current best buy offer, which is what we're going to do. Yeah, sure, some other platforms with fancy apps may offer you instant buy options so that you don't have to wait for offers to trigger, but there is a premium attached to that convenience. The way I'm showing you here is cheaper. We're going to want this to trigger as fast as possible, so we're going to beat the current best buy offer and only buy for 50% of our money in this example. I'm going to buy a stable coin with the other 50%. Once your offer is submitted, you wait until it is triggered by a seller willing to sell for that price. And if you then check your balance, you will see that you now have Monero. This Monero can now be sent to any other Monero wallet on the planet at minimal cost. No waiting for three days because it came from another bank. No waiting until after the long weekend or public holiday because the hamster that needs to sign off every transaction is off until Monday in 2021 while they charge you for the privilege of sitting with your money. 
You can also cancel offers if you change your mind or make multiple buy and sell offers depending on how much of the applicable currency you have available because whatever you have locked in an order is obviously committed. Let's go through the same process to buy another stable coin or token on the platform. I'm going to go for the altcoin trader Kruger Rand token. Now that the money is in a crypto format, everything is pretty simple to operate. Wallets are like banks. Wallet addresses function like bank account numbers. If you want to send anybody that Monero you just bought, like for instance, me, you simply need their Monero wallet address and the rest is straightforward. Never type an address, always copy and paste. There are often buttons in the apps or on the exchanges for this purpose, or even better yet, scan the QR codes for the applicable wallet. These QR codes can be sent as screenshots and emails as well. That is all we're going to cover today. Next time we will look at some details like how to check fees and how to sell your crypto back to RANS and cash it out from an exchange back into your bank account. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Please remember to click subscribe and the bell for notifications and you can find us in the following places. What you doing to